Hey, Jules Plus Vegan, and as always, welcome. And for those who are new, I hope you can benefit from this channel. So like any good kindergartner, I got a hold of scissors and chopped off my bangs. <laughs> can you dig it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I do stuff like that. I get frustrated, I get in a panic attack, I and then what? Make it a thousand times worse. My rule is that I always have to keep my bangs to at least here because they shrink so much. Uh, hello? Who is cutting those? <laughs> Luckily, they grow almost as quickly as my eyebrows, which seriously need to be addressed. Anyway, it's all good. Um, <coughs> something's getting me, being asthmatic, yay. Yay to asthma. You know what? I'm good with it. I'm good with everything. My life is a challenge, so what? My health is challenging, so what? I'm on the planet. I'm doing it. I'm checking in with my Jules Plus Vegan crew. What's up, y'all? <laughs> and I'm happy to do that. I did my rebounding for 27 minutes. Yay me. I'm going to do my arms uh, for sure before I go to bed. I said my rosary, which is my Lenten promise. And um, I was kind and appropriate to everyone I saw today. And that is pretty good. That's pretty good. That is my, uh, definitely my good enough right now. So what I wanted to talk about, though, was um, being vegan 24-7. And I think I titled this The Need to Be Vegan 24-7. And what I mean by that is that... Um, I'm transitioning, right? I'm transitioning to understanding this way of eating, um, the levels of veganism. Uh, you know, obviously the purest form, um, which is raw, but then just whole food plant-based with no salt and no oil, which is fantastic. It's salt, oil, or sugar, of course, none of that. And then, um, of course, there's junk food vegans. There's so many levels. And as I've suggested, I, I really favor raw vegan, high-carb, low-fat raw vegan. It took me a long time to memorize that. <laughs> but occasionally, in thinking of my sometimes and my nevers and my always, I sometimes have... Um, certainly whole food plant-based and even some cooked it's rare I because it tends to trigger me um so I don't do it too much but I have had some pasta before and I've certainly had a baked potato um it did put me into a tizzy if I dare to go on to something like bread I'm pretty much in trouble for like the next three days <laughs> I just can't do it and there's no need to do it because Live food for a live body. Thank you, Tannyism. That's one of my Tanny Rawisms. If you don't know Tanny Raw, like I always say, look her up on every social media platform. She's more amazing today than the day she started, and she was already phenomenal the day she started. So, just really important to know what your calling is and how you can share. And I was just reading a thing in my for today which is an Overeaters Anonymous Daily Thoughts book. And it was saying that Bill W., who was one of the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous, used to say that the only thing we have is our experience and that we can't share an experience we haven't had. So I have definitely been at fault for when um, I've said, oh my gosh, you know, I can really relate to that. Can I? I can certainly have compassion but empathy is to suggest that it's been my walk too. And if it hasn't, when those people feel like, uh, yeah, no, you can't because you've never experienced this, they're right. I can only love them where they are, share tools if I have any to move them forward. But I can't proclaim that I've experienced that. So I do understand why people are so protective of uh, their experience, right? They don't want to be negated. Um, but sometimes we do have to be able to move on and let go and even accept advice from people who don't necessarily know because sometimes we get so bogged down in all that that experience was that we can't even let go or move forward. We're paralyzed. Do you get that? I get that. Anyway, so what I was saying about vegan being 24-7, it was this. I still go through a lot of challenges mentally in my head. 
I still try and figure out if I can justify junk food vegan. Um, and sometimes when I want something from my old life, uh, seven months ago, <laughs> from my really old experience, um, I'll start bargaining with myself on what I can justify. And in understanding that I'm choosing to be a vegan, that kind of has to be all encompassing, including what I wear and most certainly what I eat. So sometimes what I'll say is, well, I know that there's some milk in it, but it's not like I'm drinking milk. Or I know they used an egg, but I mean, it doesn't mean someone was killed in the making of it, right? Because I mean, it's just an egg. It's just milk. Yeah, right. Let's turn that around. It's just a tortured cow who's forced to produce 350% more milk than they naturally would and are hooked up to electronic mechanisms that are pulling on their teats every minute of every day and then they're discarded at three and a half years because they're not producing what they should be even though they never should have been producing what they were required to produce. It's just chickens producing eggs among a hundred thousand others who are so obese from all the disgusting chemicals and antibiotics and everything that they can't even stand, that their bodies are just discarded and crushed by other chickens, that their beaks are taken off because they'll poke each other to death. It's just that. But no one's being killed. You know, there's times in life when the best blessing would be to kill them and not torture them repeatedly until you finally decide to kill them, right? Oh, so that's the talk I give. That's the happy little talk I give. <laughs> I start off with, hey, at least no one's being killed. I mean, they checked the eggs under a light to make sure that it wasn't ever a fetus. Yeah. Let's get back to the torture part, Juliana. Let's get back to that part where they have no life, no freedom. Let's get back to where there's sentient beings who need love and that you hang with and laugh with and see the joy in the smallest of creatures. But you're going to ask them to be tortured for your milk and eggs so that you can have what? Milk chocolate? Ugh. Piece of cake? Ugh. You know, that's the beauty of God. And of course, I always bring things back to God. But honestly, you know, people get so put out by all the requests of the Bible. You know, they're hoping that the Ten Commandments are multiple choice, right? Because they don't want to have to practice all of them. And it's like, you know, um, God only gives us these things to ease our burden, to make our life better. So yes, I could choose to say that I'm a vegetarian and I can have my little eggs and milk. And I can even say that the eggs and milk are from my own cow and my own chickens and I've watched them be raised. And so I know where they're coming from. The joke of it is on me because bovine products are for little baby cows that are supposed to hit 400 pounds in six months. Forgive me for laughing, but seriously, like this bod doesn't know how to hit 400 pounds. <laughs> I have to laugh or cry. I can hit 400 pounds in six months, okay? That's a competition I have mastered. Oh my gosh. So forget the bovine, right? And then um, the eggs, alone, like none of that serves my body, let alone what it does to the animals. But that's the joke. God's like, do you get that I gave you plentiful foods. Go back into um, the book of Genesis and, and see the plenty of the plants and the fruits and even the nuts and seeds if you're going there. But God already gave us all of that for these phenomenal healthy bodies of which people were living 900 years, right? And uh, though that's not our walk anymore, um, we still are called to 144 years and a healthy 144 years, right? And Jesus could always come back first, too. I don't favor all the stuff they talk about. <laughs> and towards the end of the Bible, I'm like, you know what, Lord, just get on with it. I'm going to try and trust the process. This is off because I know we're talking about other things. But I have to say this. Um, there's no way that God will hold, like, like think anything of me. I 
my heart just goes to feeling so bad. Like, I'll hear different people say, oh man, you know, we're going to be taken up and, and, and only these people are going to be left behind and they're going to have to struggle. You know what my heart is? Not to be taken up, even though I am Team Jesus. <laughs> is that what it was? Yeah, I'm Team Jesus. I plan on hanging with the dude for eternity. But my immediate heart is, oh my gosh, how can I stay and help those people? How can I be here and um, encourage them and cheer them on? You know, whose broken body am I going to cuddle? Kind of like the Pieta, right? Where Mary's holding her broken son's body. I'm called to stuff like that. I know it's terrible to say, but with my father, with my brother, to their last breath, I could have done anything that was asked of me. And I will again, I know. But um, God knows the whole story. It's not that I'm denying him or don't want to go with him. I just love our planet and our people so much that I can't stand the idea of them suffering for lack of knowledge. So if I haven't mentioned it before, hi, I'm Jules Blessed Vegan. I'm blessed because God has called me to be so. I'm down here on the planet, happily serving others. But ultimately, I hope all of you, even with the smallest bit of understanding and a ton of confusion, are choosing God, are choosing the understanding that Jesus is God in human form and saying that you want to be on team Jesus. Because I don't know how we were when we got here. I don't think we had a pre-choice as a baby. We may have that we forgotten all the babbling. Little babies babble and no one understands them. They may be telling us the whole way. I don't know. Um, but we're here. And I know God is good and merciful. And I know the next segment in eternity will be good too. But I don't understand it. And I get frustrated. And I pound my feet. And I get reluctant because, hello, we always fear the unknown, right? But the bottom line is, I still tell him, as confused as I am, my heart is game, and I still want to serve your people. And please be merciful, Lord, because ouch, I've had too much pain in my life. I would never wish it on anyone, and yet somehow he's given me a heart of joy. How blessed is that? And that's why I'm Jules Bless Vivian. Be Jules Bless Vivian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Viva Loco has <laughs> a crazy life. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm exhausted. Don't let me tell you that it's already 10 o'clock at night or anything else. That's my game, peeps. And it's a Friday night. Oh, it's the weekend. Can't wait to do homework and write applications for a new job. <laughs> Prayers welcome. Like if you like. Join us if you haven't. Know that you're blessed.